What's going on guys, it's Sook and I am back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. Now in today's video I'll be showing you what it's like to play games on the 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now the specs for this particular model that I am using will be left down below in the video description. Also stay to the very end of this video to see what the differences are between playing on Windows 10 via bootcamp or straight through Mac OS. Now this video did take a little bit of time putting together so if you're feeling like being awesome then go ahead and hit the subscribe button but without any further ado let's hit the titles So first up, let's talk about gaming on this machine with Windows 10. Now the games that I played here were GTA 5, Call of Duty Black Ops 4, Call of Duty Warzone, Fortnite, Battlefield 5, Apex Legends, Minecraft, CSGO, League of Legends and finally Destiny 2. So I tested these games at high graphical settings and starting off with this MacBook's native resolution of 3072 by 1920, you can see that as you'd expect for a machine with a graphics card that the frame rates were fair and all things considered, League of Legends performed the best here with an average at over 300 frames per second while Minecraft and Black Ops 4 were the only games to achieve an average of 100 frames. The top two worst performing games were Call of Duty Warzone and Battlefield 5, which both averaged less than 30 frames per second, while GTA 5, Apex Legends and Fortnite averaged anywhere between 50 to 60 frames per second. All things considered, I don't think it performed half as bad considering the settings and the form factor of the machine, and the majority of the games actually performed better than I would have expected, but I wanted to see higher frame rates, therefore I lowered the resolution this time down to 1920 by 1200 which is technically full HD at this 16 by 10 aspect ratio. At this resolution Minecraft had an average frame rate above 160 frames per second while League of Legends had an increase in its average frame rate of over 40 additional frames per second. Now while League's average frame rate increased slightly, its maximum frame rate increased by pretty much 100 frames per second, this difference between its average and maximum frame rates can make gameplay a little inconsistent, but you won't really feel that as the display on this MacBook Pro is capped at 60Hz. Here we also have Black Ops 4, Minecraft and CSGO averaging close to or exceeding 150 frames per second. While Battlefield 5 performed the worst out of the bunch, increasing its average FPS by a mere 3 frames. Call of Duty Warzone increased a good amount and was now averaging close to around 60 frames per second, though the textures and some graphic settings were a complete mess, but overall you could still play the game. There are other games that also increased their performance too when the resolution was lowered. Finally, I lowered the resolution down to standard HD at this 16 by 10 aspect ratio to a resolution of 1280 by 800. Now things here got very interesting. Firstly, Battlefield 5. Wow, 40 frames per second on average. It's laughable, quite honest, for a machine that cost two and a half thousand pounds, but the other games performed admirably. Minecraft averaged over 180 frames per second with peaks over 200 frames and League of Legends averaged on over 420 frames per second. All the other games, with the exception of Fortnite and Warzone, were averaging anywhere from approximately 120 all the way up to 200 frames per second. Not too bad as you could genuinely use this MacBook for even some heavier game titles. Now the majority of these heavier graphically intense titles are only available on Windows as they utilise the DirectX graphics capabilities, whereas macOS uses Metal. And with that being said, not all of these games titles are also supported on macOS. The only ones that actually are supported are Fortnite, CSGO, League of Legends and Minecraft. The same again here, starting off with the native resolution of this MacBook and high settings. Now this sees League of Legends once again with the highest frame rate on average with around 227 frames per second, which is a massive difference between the over 300 frames we were seeing through Windows 10. Now that being said, the frame rate was more consistent on macOS with a difference between the lowest and highest value of around 26 frames per second. Whereas 
whereas on Windows 10, the difference was actually around 79 frames. Now this is over three times as high, which is quite interesting to see. Now, yes, you could put a frame rate limiter on should you want to get more consistent frame rates, but we're not doing that here as we just want to see what the lowest and highest values are, of course, with their average frame rate. Also, something that is quite interesting to see is that when playing Fortnite at these different resolutions, there wasn't really much of a difference between the frame rates, especially when you consider that we were switching between macOS and Windows 10. Now, I feel that this may have something to do with the Unreal Engine 4 that is used to power Fortnite, but that is a topic for a completely different conversation. So there you have it. Yes, you can play games on this MacBook Pro and genuinely not run into too many issues. And when you do, they're not really that bad. Call of Duty Warzone has got some texture issues, which can be annoying at times. But overall, I would say this. If you're after a MacBook Pro that can do many things as of course they're designed to and even play the odd game that gets thrown at it, then you'll be fine with this model. As I've said many times before and no doubt will continue to say, you can get better gaming performance using a gaming laptop for cheaper, but not for much cheaper, especially when you consider the form factor and the processor and other things that are going on with this MacBook Pro. Also, if there is one thing that I would like to see Apple do is maybe bring ProMotion over to, to their Mac lineup. I mean, at least then this, this additional power, this frame rate that we're actually seeing, uh, at least then we'll actually be able to see it and feel that difference. Um, there are rumors, of course, of them bringing it to the new iPhones this year, 2020, um, and it's all already, of course, being implemented in the iPad Pro lineup. So maybe, in the next five years, we may actually see Apple bringing that technology over to the MacBook lineup. And at least then gaming on a MacBook would actually be a bit more viable. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.